Today is March 14, 1995, and I'm speaking with Lee Maker at his home in Bend, Oregon. We're talking about his experiences in the transport of the logging railroad communities at the Shevlin Hickson Logging and Lumber Company of Bend, Oregon. This is tape number four of the Shevlin Hickson Brooks Scanlon Oral History Project. My name is Ron Gregory, and the tape belongs to me. I'd like to begin this interview, Lee, by asking when and where you were born and how long you've lived here in the Bend area. Well, I was born in Prineville in 1921, and uh, we came to Sheldon's uh, camp in 1922. I was a year old. And uh, we started out at, uh, uh, my dad had a run a steam pump for Sheldon. Had, we had about six locomotives, and uh, all told, and we had this big steam pump took care of the camp, and also the locomotives, which used a lot of water. as a steam engine in those days. Also, they had uh, ledger woods and steam jammers that blew the logs, and they took them water. They hauled it out to the machines. And I started school at uh, at uh, the Harper School, we called it, which they later moved the school that's down to Vanderbilt Ranch and uh, have restored it. Now, was the Harper School was that in a camp itself? No, no. Okay. So the camp had schools of their own. They had two two uh, two schools, and high school kids went to well. First, they took them in the bend, and uh, well, they drove in the bend, stayed in the bend, the kids, and, and uh, they had this uh, camp school up to about sixth grade. And then when they moved to, later on to the Pine, uh, the cliff camp, they had a school bus, they had a 72 passenger school bus. Most have been the biggest school bus in the world, I guess. It was 72 mm -hmm. passengers, a big old Rio. That is a big bus. <laughs> they hauled the kids to the Pine. <coughs> We moved from, uh, uh, well, they had three pumps, one at Spring River, and they moved it down to Harper, or uh, Twin Bridges, down below a ways, uh, towards Bend. And uh, then they had a, a spring there at, uh, at or Sun River, near Harper Bridge. And they had a diesel motor there for a while, and they put a steam pump in. Had a six inch main, water main, and I could still hear the sound of that old pump. That steam engine had a great big. Uh, Levers went around like this, and wrong, wrong. Big stones that pumped the water, up, had it pumping up over hills that had pressure in the camp. <laughs> and uh, we moved from there up along the highway. They called it the Winoga Camp. It's a uh, camp number two. And the main so, so was the Winoga Camp the first camp that you lived in for the show? No, we lived in Lava Case Camp for quite a while. My dad commuted back and forth to the, to the pump. <laughs> no, the, uh, I take that back. The uh, first camp we lived in was the Spring River Camp, right, right above the river there. I've been out there, so I still can find the camp. Yeah, in fact, I can find all the camps. And that was west of Highway 97? Yes. It was just, just west of the Spring River, and just right down in the, the river mm. from uh, the Spring River camp. Was that a family-oriented camp? Also? Yes. Families? Yes. You know, they had two old. camps. Mm -hmm. They'd move back to the Steel Camp, and then they'd go back to Harper Camp in the wintertime because it was closer to what's much snow there. Mm -hmm. People would get out. And they had, of course, they had a snow plow, but no uh, locomotives. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the steel camp. Was that different than a woods camp? Or no, no, they called it steel camp. I don't know why uh, they called it steel camp. I guess uh, uh, had a steel camp. Had a Winoga camp up by Winoga Butte. Mm -hmm. And uh, Long Drudge, that Long Drudge, well, the first camp, I guess, was the Long Drudge. I was never in that one. I was just out of Bend here a little ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, up, up, uh, was just west of Benham Falls. And uh, let's see, we moved to... Uh, we call it well, the Noga Siding there, the Great Northern finally comes through there, but uh, then they, they combined the two camps, uh, the Cliff Camp and the, and the, uh, the other smaller camps, uh, uh, the other smaller camp. Uh, when they had the Lava Caves Camp, there was a camp uh, up toward Sugar Pine Butte, they call it Sugar Pine Butte Camp, and that's the one they moved down to Winoga. <laughs> and, uh, it wasn't a Winoga, named the Winoga Camp, because the real Winoga Camp was up by Winoga Butte. Well, when Cliff Camp when folks moved to Cliff Camp, was that the only camp operating for Shevlin Hickson? When they combined the, they combined the two there, yes. Okay, okay. At, at that point, uh, did the, the camp generally become known to the rest of the population around here at Shevlin? Well, yes, that was the headquarters, because that's where the mill was. Okay. All the logs into the mill. Okay. Uh, let's, let's go back and, and uh, focus this portion again on your family life, and I'd like to begin by asking where your parents came from and uh, how they happened to come to work for Shevlin Hickson. Well, my, my parents uh, were all for 
generations back, they were Cape Cod, Massachusetts, Harwich, and Brewster. My dad was from Brewster, my mother was from Harwich. And uh, when did they move here? Well, my dad came out here in 1911. And it was kind of wild west in those days when he got off the train of the Dallas, he bought himself a six shooter and a cowboy hat and a pair of chaps. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, I don't know if I don't know if he came off got off in Shanico. I think he got off in Shanico later on. He, he railroaded into the Metolius down you know, here, where they built that line in the bend. And then he went back and got my mother. The honey went honeymoon in Niagara Falls. Mm -hmm. Her parents were distraught, you might say. They think of her going out here into the wild, wild west. <laughs> but anyway, uh, they lived in Prineville, and my, let's see, my sister was born there in Prineville, and uh, Lois, I think you interviewed her. And she, uh, then he, he uh, uh, well, he got a petition to, her, uh, to get a homestead. Mm -hmm. uh, he got a homestead up in the Bear Creek area, Little Bear. He had some friends up there. That was his old boy, Ed Chum, was up there. And he had a garage in Brineville, and he had to commute weekends back and forth. It was about 30 miles. It was quite a time catching a rider. He didn't ride a horse. He rode a motorcycle once in a while. And uh, then he burned out in a big fire in Prineville. And uh, my dad said, that's enough. He uh, had a good friend down in Eureka. He was a commercial painter. And he was going down a job with him and he found a job and he, on the way down he stopped at Sheldon's mill down here and asked about the job and they asked him if he knew anything about steam. Oh yes, he said he'd worked on steam. He used to drive cars. He used to learn how to drive cars with chauffeurs back in Boston. But anyway, uh, you want me to tell about the Bill Gal of the cars or Well let's let's uh let me ask you uh, approximately what year do you think it was that your dad went to work for Shell? Nineteen twenty two. Nineteen twenty two. And when you Eureka, he stopped at uh, Sheldon's Mill, and that's when he got the job running the steam pump. <laughs> and then uh, you were born in Crineville. Uh -huh. My brother and my sister and I were all, all born in Crineville. And then shortly after that, then did you move into the camps? Uh huh. Okay. After we got through, well, they had they had to build a camp house one down there somewhere. Where that's where they lived about uh, seven miles from the camp. And uh, so they built a house for my dad and another fellow, Henry Cables, and the two of them had a 24-hour shift, mm -hmm. uh, 12 on, well, 12 on, 12 off, you know. And uh, they run a, a steam pump then, and they built houses, uh, camp houses for them. And when they moved us back to the camp, they just took a cat, caterpillar and drug the house. They had skids in it. They just drug the house up the railroad mm -hmm. and the rest of the camp there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as far as life in the camps, uh, did it ever get lonely there as a boy uh, living in the no, camps? No, I, I never regret it at all. The only thing I used to regret when I got a little older, kids in Bend all had bicycles. They didn't have, they had nice enough to drive along and ride on. And I finally got an old bicycle on pedal papers and the tires were bad. My dad filled them with sawdust and taped them up and I around that thing. So did uh, kids have bikes out in the camp? Well, they started having bikes about that time, but just dirt to get around with dirt, which is all right. Yeah. Uh, did the camps generally have a lot of children in them? A lot of kids. Were there a lot of kids? Uh, do you recall if childhood friendships uh, were fairly stable, or did the friends tend to come and go? Oh, no, it was pretty stable. Uh, occasionally move out. Uh, uh, people would move in and work there a couple of years, and then later on, of course, the Depression, and they all stayed there with no place to go. Children were very good to the people there. They uh, tried to get each one of them to work down there to buy groceries. But they had a store, a company back store that furnished groceries. And I know after the Depression was over, people for several years struggled to pay the, the store back for the groceries they had. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, Trent Olson, he was timekeeper out there. He ran the store there for quite a while, the company store, and then Erickson's took over. So Erickson's was the main supplier for uh, Shevlin, they uh -huh. the Shevlin yeah. camp. Okay. Yeah, I had heard that uh, uh, Erickson's kind of built its business on the logging camps. Is there well, some truth to that? Or well, I think so. It's probably a good customer. They had a truck come out there every day and bring groceries and things. Okay, again, back to the camps. Uh, were there any youth organizations you could join out in the camp? Yeah, we had uh, a preacher. George Redding used to come out there. He was in Boston. He had three children. He had a a uh, girl and two boys, and they come out and we started a, they had summer summer school and do things, and, uh, and uh, they started a 
club, the friendly Indians, mm-hmm. uh, kind of like the Boy Scouts. Mm-hmm. And he'd take us on uh, camping trips up to Colvis Lake around. And nice old fellow. I really liked him real well. Except he went back to Boston and told him to get some money out of the wealthy people. He told him there's a lot of people out there who are illiterate and all that, and they weren't to just sharps anybody else. But some of the people, there was an article in some paper they printed back there, and somebody got a hold of it. Mm. And uh, some of the guys were pretty pretty mad at him. But uh, all in all, I, I think he was a great guy. So uh, this was like a, a scout type of yeah. organization in a way, and he'd take you out camping and... Uh, okay. They had powwows and meetings and stuff. I remember dressed up in Indian feathers and you know, burlap sacks. Our mother made suits for us, you know. Uh-huh. Was this uh, boys and girls or just boys? Just boys. Just boys. What about the girls? What, well, what did they have to do out there? They didn't have, they, they're, they're more church-oriented. Uh, he, had, he had things for them, too, but not for the boys, like the boys. Mm-hmm. Uh, they didn't have the, they went in blocked the friendly Indians, all boys for that. Yeah. <laughs> as a boy, was there a particular camp that you remember as uh, being special or a favorite location? I think the Cliff Camp and the, and the Pine Camp are my favorites. Of course, I was, uh, I think I was about seven years old when we moved back into camp. And uh, uh, we used to go to the camp all the time. And my dad is go to check on the water and different things. And, and we'd fish and stuff, take fish. And we'd get 20, I think 21 of the fish was the limit on the river. Mm. My dad was a real sportsman. And he, he'd, uh, we'd catch more fish than we could eat. And he'd always take them up, divide them up to the different people in camp that like fish. Mm-hmm. So there was never anything wasted. But uh, those two camps, I think, were the, were the main camps that I remember vividly. Mm-hmm. Okay, you said that when you were about seven, you moved back to the camps. That's when they drug the, from the spring. They run the water, gravity flow the, from the by, by the lake mm-hmm. down to the camps. They dis- dismantled me, the steam pumps. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, they, uh, they had another pump, a diesel pump, down by the little Deschutes. Uh, Ranch it was just just a couple of miles from this one camp. That's when we moved up to the Vandenberg Ranch, mm-hmm. and they pumped water to that camp because it was it was below the other camp, and they didn't want to run the water main down a shorter distance to uh, this other pump they put in. So, as uh, what what was it that you okay? Your dad worked as a, a waterman basically, but was there a name that they would call his job? No, I don't think so. Uh, uh, just a steam pump operator, all I know. Uh, he went later on in the cliff camp and they did away with the pumps. He, he had he run the service station and the warehouses and, and uh, the fire dispatcher and the train dispatcher and the locomotives that had to get on the main line, you know. <laughs> and uh, that was his job. He, just, he never had a vacation. He just practically a seven day a week job. Mm. Okay, so. So as a steam pump operator, uh, what was it that he would do? Well, he'd fire the boilers and take care of them and keep, us, keep the pressure up and had a big, big, big wood yard. Mm-hmm. And they'd haul wood into the boilers and the push car. And what did the boilers do? How, uh, what was it that they were doing? Well, the boilers made steam for the pump. Okay. They had a, a steam pump down there, uh, big wheels on it, and they run the belt up to this pump. I, I told you, wrong. Hear that? I can still hear that. I used to hear that hanging around him all the time. That's before I started school. I remember. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I remember we bought mother bought some chickens, fryers, and was, uh, took them down there and uh, big, a big building a steam pump was in. And we were going to dress them. My dad and I were going to dress them. Of course, I was just a little fella. And I remember those chickens got loose in there. This big old belt was about that wide. And probably, it seemed to me it was a thousand yards long, but probably about 100 feet down to the pump, and uh, from the steam engine to the pump. And these chickens would fly around and land on this belt. Of course, the belt was moving. They'd fly around, fed it, fly, and I got the uh-huh. biggest kick out of there. Huh? So what was it that the steam pump operator? I don't mean to uh, sound too dense here, but I'm not getting the connection. Well, he had to keep steam up in that water and, uh, and uh, keep firing the boiler all the time. And, it was pretty pretty busy around there checking you know so not broke down or anything if it broke down they wouldn't have any water yeah okay so that was that was what the steam pump operated in it operated water for the camp uh-huh. a big spring there they suck this water out of the spring okay did uh i'm probably jumping ahead here but uh at the camps uh, was there 
indoor plumbing? Did, did that well? Did the uh, pump operate for, for that? years? They had uh, uh, they had water running around the uh, water lines running around the camp. They stepped the houses off each side of the track. But they had a water line running up through there. And about every three houses there was a uh, standpipe faucet, and people would draw their water out of that with buckets. Okay. But later on in the pine camp, they piped it right into the house, and everybody had bathrooms in the homes. And of course, they had the old WPA too, but then they, everybody started they had water we put, put in bathrooms. That, that was at La Pine? Uh, no, at that was Pine Cliff Camp. Camp? At the Cliff uh, Camp? Uh, no, La Pine Camp, back in Parkland. Okay, so prior to that then, uh, there was one of these standing pipes that people would draw water from between about three houses? Every three houses, about three or four houses, they'd have a water line. I know in the wintertime sometimes it'd freeze up and they'd have to throw them out, but they, they'd pack them with sawdust and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, prior to a pine then, most people had outhouses? Uh-huh. Okay. What about bathing? Oh, uh, well, we had a bathhouse. Okay. And uh, had about uh, six or seven stalls in there, and a wood stove that heated a great big old water tank. They had both out, took care of the, the bathhouse. And the, on the other end, they had a, one for the ladies, just a double stall, I guess. I don't know. I was never in there, but the, I think it was two stalls in there. Mm -hmm. and a commode. Mm -hmm. And so basically, it was a communal type of bathing house. Yeah. yeah. But, a lot of the people, uh, well, like the old days, they used to take a bath in the water in a tub, you know, yeah. and heat on the stove, heat the water. That's what he used to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad takes up the bathhouse once in a while in the evening when the, when the father and everybody got through the bathhouse, he'd take us up there and he'd take a bath. Mm -hmm. What was the development of the camps like uh, from the first that you remember until the last? For instance, uh, were they bigger with more people as time went by, or did they tend to get smaller? No, it's pretty good size. You know, people stayed there uh, until they got enough money. Some of them liked to go back to their home, home race spuds over in Idaho or down around Portland. They'd go down there and start a little farm that they always wanted all their life. And, but most of the people stayed there for years. I think I knew everybody in camp, of course, on federal papers. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, they were pretty nice houses. Uh, they were well built, a little better than Brooks Scanlon had. And they got so they used to send them off with a crane off the tracks. They moved them on the uh, flat cars. Mm -hmm. And then they'd set them up. But later on, they'd unload them in a certain place and drag them around and, and had streets so they weren't by the tracks. Mm -hmm. And uh, they put two of them together, you know, and put a little one between them, and they had pretty nice homes. Did uh, work in the woods continue year round? Usually, yes. Okay. After the Depression, they, they, uh, they work year round, yeah. Okay, so. Uh, everybody basically kept working, whether it was snowy conditions uh -huh. or mucky right. conditions or uh, fluctuations got, in the timber trade. If they, could get, if they could get out in the woods, uh, they used to haul them out to the woods on, on a train uh, when they'd haul the empties up there, but they uh, later on got what they call crummies. Mm -hmm. They had some Chevrolet uh, ton, ton and a half trucks and they built a body on the back of them. They called them crummies. Mm -hmm. uh, what about nationalities? Were there Different groups of people? Who are Everything. Really, yeah? Can yeah. you give me some examples? And Norwegians and Swedes and Yugoslavians and German and English and uh, Scotch and Irish. And, and these people at, came from those countries? Uh, some of them did. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the people came out here from Yugoslavia that worked on the railroad that Harrington Hill built in the bend. Mm -hmm. And uh, they settled down out here. So were they woods workers? Yeah. They were? Yeah. Okay. Uh, they had the Austrians. They called them Austrians. They were Yugoslavians. They, had a, they were usually had a steel gang. Okay. The tracks and they, they, uh, they hung them together pretty much. They had a certain section of camp that they all lived close to each other. Mm -hmm. and they're great people. Okay. Uh, so, is there a difference between the the steel gang and the woods group or well, woods crew? They had timber fallers and they had guys that loaded the logs and uh, cat skinners and they used to used to use horses and high wheels. Mm -hmm. and they got cats and they had choker setters. And the steel gang, they, that's all they did was built railroad grades. Okay. And they had an engineer, George Coffin, was, uh, I used to work with him too. Uh, he did all the surveying and uh, timber cruising and, and uh, uh, laying out the railroad tracks. And then later on, they, they quit hauling so many logs they, uh, out in the woods. They'd use uh, uh, logging trucks. They got logging trucks and trains, and they didn't have to build so many spur lines. And they'd bring them all into one place and load them on the flat cars and haul them into them. Mm -hmm. Train. So, uh, these people that might have been like Eastern Europeans, did, did they tend to stay with the, the steel crew since that's where they had started with the, the Harriman 
track and whatnot, or did well, they move into the woods work also? Oh, some of them worked in the woods. <laughs> and, uh, most of them, they, they had a, uh, Joe Conovich, he was a, a steel gang boss, and he tired his ostrich. He's pretty strict, you know, I mean, made them work pretty hard, you know. <laughs> they were good workers. Of course, they were in the railroad business, but they, a lot of them had worked on this track that Hill and Harrington was building in the, uh, Columbia. But, uh, of course, that was done. They, some of them migrated to Ben, some went to Portland and different places, but a lot of them came and Joe knew all of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, Joe did, and he put them on the steel gang, and they were good workers, hard workers. You mentioned that, that they were pretty tight with each other, and they had kind of a place in the camp of their own. Right? Well, like the uh, Yugoslavians, uh, they lived in one area. It's all one big area, but there's certain sections of it. They, and, and the rest of the people are all mixed mm -hmm. families. Mm -hmm. Stuff. Okay, so it sounds like there was quite a conglomeration of different groups of people. Now, was that mostly in the early days, or did it continue to be like that? They stayed, well, stayed right with it. Okay, a few of them come and go. What about uh, Hispanics or blacks or Native Americans? Yeah, we had none of those. Okay, uh, they weren't very prevalent around here. Any uh, Asians? Can you tell me, as far back as you can remember, the order of the names of the camps? Well, yes. Uh, the first camp, I think, was a long garage camp, just right out of Bend here, up there by the end of the Seven Mountains. Mm -hmm. But you weren't at that one yourself? No. Okay. Uh, that was in 19... They used to have a camp right here in town, and tents people lived in, uh, uh, just out of Bend, little ways. And then they, they had... Uh, let's see, I think the next camp was... Uh, Spring River Camp and the Steel Camp and the Winoga Camp and uh, the uh, Sugar Pine Camp and the Lava Caves Camp and the camp down by the Vandenberg Ranch and then the Cliff Camp and then the Rapine Camp and, uh, and the Summit Camp on the Summit State Chase down there on the Fremont Highway. Then they moved to the Chamalt. That was just after the war. They moved down past Chamalt. And uh, then they moved part of it back to the to the timbers out here by Crescent. And that's when they sold out to Brooks's. Okay. Uh, now, some of these earlier camps, were they operating at the same time? Yeah. Oh, they were. Okay, so they, they there weren't separate moves from uh, one location like the camp of the Long Garage, then to this next one, and then to this next one. There were a number of these earlier camps that were all operating at the same time. Well, they had two camps usually operate until we got to the cliff camp. That's when they combined the two of them. Okay. The transportation is a little easier to get to. Okay. But they'd move from the steel camp or the camp, they'd move over to Harper camp in the summertime, and then you had the Lava Caves camp, and they'd move down in the wintertime because of the snow. And the spring, they'd move back up, so it's the snow would have to move one of the camps back up. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's uh, talk about the houses a little bit. Can you tell me uh, what the family houses were like? Yes, there were two rooms. Uh, and uh, uh, there was a kitchen and a living room and a combination bedroom. And they were probably uh, 20 foot, 30 foot by 15. And uh, they had, uh, the kitchens had cupboards and everything in them. In fact, there's an old house out there by uh, the side of the timbers. There were several houses of Bradley. Took one, two of them, put them together out here on the highway, 20. But they, uh, later on, they uh, gave them two houses, and they put them, put them together with a petition, a uh, little deal in between, they built in between, mm -hmm. they put a bathroom in one corner there. So they had bedrooms for the kids, used to, and we had a house, my, my brother slept in a bed out in the kitchen, a little folding bed, and my sister and my folks and I slept in the other room, they had a trundle bed, shoved under the folks' bed, mm -hmm. and it's old, old time deals, no bed bugs. <laughs> well, did the houses pretty much, the design of them stay pretty much the same, the same. Uh, for as long as you can remember? Okay. The same. Uh, did anyone ever decide that, well, we need to, uh, to build some new houses and, and because these are, you know, from the, the loading and unloading, you know, we've been getting some beat up, so did they ever build new ones? Oh, yeah, they were building new houses all the, all the time. People would be waiting for a house to move into camp. They, didn't have, they kept, kept building houses. And the houses were in good shape. They had these great big... 12 by 12 beams underneath the house, and another one run across, and they had a crotch up in the, in the, in the cable of the roof. It was the crotch with the cable to 
the left end, but they put the hooks on this cross piece and run through this on each end and run through this notch. Mm -hmm. And this crane would pick them up and lay them on the flat guards. That's how they moved them. And they set them down the same way. And they never broke anything. It was very gentle. Yeah. Was there any kind of special design that the houses had so that they could be packaged kind of easier to be set on the, the well, that, That's why they built them all the same. Uh -huh. No problem at all. And people would build a, a little shed maybe on the side of them for a bunkhouse for the kids. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people had built bunkhouses. Some of them, they, they got more houses, they let people have a couple of houses. And they finally everybody had two houses. And they kept, they had carpenters there, and that's all they did was... It, it seemed like I had read somewhere that, uh, you know, there was somehow a porch folded up. Yeah. And, okay. That's that. They had a, had a um, upright porch with beams down like that. And they had a porch that, uh, on the on front. And when they moved the camp, they'd lift the porch up and drop the other deal and hook it. Mm -hmm. And the cable would just lift them up. Okay. So did doing that kind of protect the windows or something? Well, no, it was just an extra tighten, space for people. Tightened it up a little. Yeah. And with the shade. And, and uh, everybody had a cooler up there. Uh, keep things cool, you know, uh, water dripping to the side. Who did the maintenance on the houses? Well, they had a, had a crew, that's all they did, and they paint the house. Well, later on, they'd just give the people paint, let them paint their own house, they just give them paint. Mm -hmm. You ever have any trouble with uh, pipes freezing up or anything? Oh, yeah, but then they, they dig these ditches in to put the pipe in, and was, I don't know if he's out in the pine, you know, I found a couple of pieces where they bent the pipe and they got it up, and they just left it there. Mm -hmm. Later on, the pine cap, everybody had lawns. Hmm. Okay. Uh, what what kind of lighting did they have? Did the houses have? Well, the company uh, we used to have little gasoline lanterns or kerosene, the Latin lamps. I remember used to study the big old Latin lamp. You remember those? Oh yeah, I have one myself. Uh, uh, what what camps were those? Were those the earlier camps? up until uh, up, well uh, the Cliff Camp? They had a, a little dynamo. Uh, my dad used to run that too, and he had lights in his house and and the boss's house and the bunkhouses. That big bunkhouse on rails mm -hmm. and. Uh, he shut them off 10 o'clock every night and shut the motor off. So they moved to the pine camp. They had a, a two great big diesels. And they provided a nice would run 24 hours a day. So it was an electrical plant. Uh -huh. yeah. electrical. What about there? Did they, the electricity, I, uh, maybe I didn't hear, the electricity ran 24 hours a day? Yeah. Or? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. So there wasn't a shutoff time there. No, not on those big diesel They They had a fellow just took care of the light plants. Okay, okay. Uh, how were they heated? Wood, with wood. Yeah, I, I, I wonder. I never. I often thought, how come this camp never burned down? Because everybody had a heater in the house, and I've seen our house. Well, all the houses that next to the wall just blistered the paint, you know. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that they had a, a roof inside the ceiling like this, and they had a gable, and they had a, 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 a jack, a pipe, uh, pipe jack, I guess you call it, right up to the ceiling, and went up on the roof, angleways. Mm -hmm. And I've seen those pipes red hot. You know, how it kept from burning those houses down. Yeah, you know, I mean they're pretty well. You know, were, did they ever burn down the church? They had a few fires. They were. Uh, yeah. They get right on. They had a little boys. I got a water tank always on the flat cars that they get right in there with. Later on, of course, they had a truck. You know, the water truck. How uh, how did people store their food? Well, they had, they had cellars. Everybody dug a cellar, root cellar. Okay. And. Uh, that's how they get cool down in there. We never had any refrigeration, of course, but uh, uh, I know uh, I worked in a store for Clint Olson uh, when I was a kid. And uh, they bring ice cream out. I'd go to town, they'd load up, we'd haul cordwood into town to Bend Dairy and also the Meadowland Creamery, and then uh, he'd go and pick the groceries up. And that's cut, cut down his bill by bringing them wood, sure. cordwood. And I'd have to load the truck, we'd come into town and then load the wood, and we'd go down and pick up all these groceries. But I remember getting the ice cream, it was a great big uh, canvas. Bag or insulated, you know, in a metal deal, packed with ice. Mm -hmm. That's how they got, got the cold stuff. And the milk, of course, had ice on it. Uh, crates, we used to get those crates that had milk bottles and just covered with ice and stuff to keep it cool. So everybody had a, a storage cellar then, uh -huh. and they dug that themselves. Yeah. That wasn't something that the company came uh, in and just scooped something out of. Always a rock pile, seemed like. Uh -huh. Okay, I, I noticed when I was out there yesterday that there's kind of a superstructure to them. Did they build roofs over them or something? Well, yeah. They, uh, there was pumice, all pumice up in that pine camp. And you dig a hole, you had to sink a frame the same time you're digging it, just like sugar. Mm -hmm. it cave in. So you could build a frame and sink it as they dug the cellar. And they put a stairway down there, and they put a 
a roof on it that he covered with dirt. Mm -hmm. it right out. You know, another thing that I noticed was that, uh, you know, of course the, the cellars are long features, but there's also kind of smaller features. Some of them were triangular, and some of them were square, and those had also been sunk down into the earth with siding and whatnot. Oh, what were those? Well, that was cellar as far as I know. Okay, because, well, they're only about, oh, well, about that. Two and a half. They had narrow runways and steps down there. Okay. Could that have been it? Well, but they're boarded up all the way around. You know, there's boards all the way around. Yeah. And like I say, some of them are triangular. And they're just, you know, it's just kind of dropped down. And you look down the top, they look triangular. Yeah. I don't know what that would be. Yeah. Uh, everybody's cellars are square or rectangular. Yeah. And, they, and, yeah, and they were fairly long, right? It must have been probably caved in and looked that way. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. It, yeah, everybody has. I, I, I never saw anything with a triangle shape looking down on top yeah. of them. Yeah, because I wondered if they were, you know, even outhouse pits or whatever. Well, they had they had outhouse. They had WPAs, fancy ones. You know, they open the door and they fall down. They had a cement base to them. Okay. And they had what they call slop holes. Up all there. They're all dug up around all around the country. The bottle hunters have been digging up these slop holes. And and the slop holes were what then? And they were square. They uh, square hole dug. And they had a uh, platform, wood platform, the square deal on top of the cover, lid, mm -hmm. and they just dumped their slop and stuff and tore from glass. And can. Well, they had can piles, because I could take you some can piles from the cookhouse that you wouldn't believe. Yeah, okay, so, uh, okay, there were bachelors living in the camp, right? Oh, yeah, I had bunkhouses that built on uh, flat cars. Uh, not flat cars, but just regular long, oh, probably 200 feet long, different stalls and bunks and everybody had steps up to them. There was a lot of bachelors lived out there. They uh, had a cookhouse and everything for them. How many, uh, how many men do a room on those flat cars? Oh, I suppose uh, some, of them had, uh, some of them had single rooms and some had big, big rooms. There probably four or five guys lived in one section of it. Later on, they partitioned them off. Mm -hmm. man have, each man could have his own bunk. Okay, so earlier on, in the earlier camps then, uh, the bachelors might have been living together in, in some of these larger rooms, but then as time went by, say like by La, the Lapine camp, things had been section them off. And they okay, didn't. and each uh, each man had a room of his own, basically. They were longer than the railroad car, I mean, uh, about half again as long as a regular railroad car. Did on rails? Did, did they ever have a, a a home like a family home or the bachelors? Mm -hmm. Well, some. Uh, some of them lived in Ben and they'd go out and stay out there a week, come on weekends later on, and transportation is a little more. Okay. Uh, what would you say the ratio of bachelors to married folks were? Oh, I think there were more more families. It was pretty much a toss up, though. There's a lot of. A lot of uh, Back, you'd call them bachelors, they, like some of them had homes here in town, they'd stay out there during the week and mm -hmm. come into town. Mm -hmm. I think it was pretty much even. Did the bachelors move around a lot as far as employment, or were they pretty a pretty stable workforce? Pretty stable. Really? Okay. I think like everybody stayed a long time, and uh, well, a few, I could say, back and forth. They'd... What did Shevel and Hickson provide for the bachelors in terms of their quarters? Well, it was in these bunkhouses, and they, of course, they had a cook, cookhouse. And later on, well, even in the last camp, they had a, a, a cookhouse. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the bachelors were boarded with different families. Oh, they did? Uh -huh. Okay. So, in the bachelors' quarters themselves, uh, there'd be a bunk, and the company provided uh, a mattress and the sheets? And no, all the company didn't furnish. They furnished their own bedding. They had, uh, had shelves and sections of office. Uh, like I say, they later, they, later all they went went all to separate mm -hmm. cabins, or you might say sections of these bunk cars. What about laundry? Uh, how know, did the bachelors do the laundry? Well, they, some of the camp the women in the camp would take their laundry. Oh, they laundry. Okay, fun. Okay, and they had tubs over in the bathhouse that they could wash their own clothes if they wanted to. Uh -huh. But <coughs> Chef Dixon didn't uh, provide any kind of sheeting or bedding no, or anything uh -huh. like that. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, tell me about the cookhouse, uh, Lee, for example, the size of the building. Well, it was the same size as the bunk cars. They had a big long table on tables in them. It seems to me there's two rows of tables and benches on each side of the table. And they had some of the women worked in the cookhouse. They had a couple of cooks and dishwashers and whatnot. And they, uh, 
I'd serve the food, just bring it out these long tables, family style, and just keep keep shoveling the food out. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're good cooks. Were there any single women in the camp? You mentioned that some of the women worked as well, waitresses. Yeah, uh, some of the waitresses were single women. They, uh, some of the women in the camp worked there too, but they had. Uh, I remember a couple of ladies that uh, were uh, waitresses and whatnot, and they follow the camps. Okay, where was the cookhouse located in relationship to the rest of the... Well, it was right close to the bunkhouses. Okay. And that kind of divided the uh, family house and the bunkhouses. And that's where the bathhouse was and the post office and the commissary, we used to call it. My sister was postmaster there, postmaster for a while of years. Uh, did all members of the community uh, eat at the cookhouse? Or? No, no, just the uh, local bunkhouse guys. Okay, the bachelors. Bachelors, yeah. Okay. Could the the family members, could they go and eat there if they wanted to? No, they, they charged them so much for their, their food. I think the, all the families used to eat in their own homes. Mm-hmm. Do, you rem- do you recall or do you know uh, what the price of a meal for a bachelor might be? Uh, I don't know. They took it out of their checks. Uh, the timekeeper, he took care of that. They, I, get, I don't think they had chips. I think they just knew who, who was there. I, I don't I don't remember that part of it. Uh, okay. Uh, what meals were generally served in the cookhouse? Well, they served breakfast, they served dinner or supper at night, and then they packed lunches for the guys that would. Okay. How did, how did they get them to the woods? Well, when the guys would eat breakfast, they had all the lunches out there, and they just go by a oh, table and pick them up. Okay. Okay. Uh, sack lunches? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, you call them nose bags. Nose bags, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I've seen that term. Yeah. Uh, so, you think thinking that the, the bachelors got enough to eat then? Oh, yeah, they feed them good. Lots of food, huh? Yeah, they had to feed them good. They worked hard. Uh, how about the waste? Uh, was there a lot of waste? Since there was a lot of food, was there a lot of waste? Yeah, they had a slop car, they called it. A few horses, and they'd haul us down to the pigs. Yeah, the pigs then. They raised the hogs and uh, put the hogs for the, for the warehouse, not for the cookhouse. They must have had a hundred hundred dogs down there. Is that right? Okay, so they they kept livestock for fresh meat. Uh-huh. Okay, mostly pigs, but yeah, just any, anything else? Oh, no. just no chickens, no cows, no cattle. Some of the families had the chicken houses they, for their own use, but the... were there any kind of special features for storing quantities for the cookhouse? Well, they had a supply truck, a supply car come out on the railroad, a regular railroad car. Mm-hmm. They bring that. It had a landing on it. Had a railroad track run out the end of it, and they throw a plank down there and unload all this stuff. Us kids used to always get down there. I never. I got in trouble one time. I went down there and I had some garlic, and I slapped a couple of cloves of garlic. Took it to school, and boy, I'll tell you, we had to stay outside and write a fifteen thousand word scene. So the cookhouse didn't have a uh, a cellar like the families did. Um, no, they had the sawdust uh, coolers. The walls packed with sawdust, and that's how they kept the perishables in. Mm-hmm. But, uh, okay, and and it was electrical fed, and no, no, they didn't have electricity at the time. Okay, not even by the time they got later there. on. Later on, they had refrigerators in there and okay. kind of things. But uh, uh, for a long time in the fine camp, they uh, they cut out the cookhouse. And all the bastards were, I think, after the depression, they cut out the cookhouse and. Uh, most of these pastors boarded with different people, different meals with And uh, then later on, I guess down to Shemal camp, they started the cookhouse again. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, having the hogs and whatnot, that was something that <clears throat> was generally in the earlier camps? Yeah, you know, the cliff camp, I remember. Well, they had, had them in all the camps up to, up to the, uh, uh, I think cliff camp was the last, yeah, the cliff camp was the last one they raised hogs and they had to cook out uh, because they they get part of fresh meat and they had a guy takes care of them, took care of them, butchered, making bacon and ham and stuff. He was pretty good at it. An old German fella. What was the atmosphere like inside the cookhouse? I mean, you got a bunch of bachelor loggers or whatever. Or did they ever get kind of rowdy in there? Was it oh, pretty orderly? Or? It was pretty orderly. Uh, it was pretty decent, decent people. They, they had a row or something. They would have stopped it right now. Uh-huh. They, they had some row, sure. Uh, you know. Just like any place else, guys don't get along, or maybe one of them pinched the waitress or something. Mm-hmm. I didn't like. It. I don't know. Yeah. I, I just uh, I, I don't remember any real trouble they had. Uh, was there designated seating? 
that you know what designated seating like you know i sat here you sat there well i guess they just sit where they wanted to they okay. had these long tables they had benches along each side of them could visitors come if uh they came into the camp or whatever could they eat at the cook oh yeah they, some of the bosses uh, sometimes would bring somebody in or uh it wasn't a general practice i mean uh, company connected people though. yeah yeah if uh you were out in the woods or you'd hunting or something and you stopped by the, the camp, uh, you probably couldn't get a meal there. Well, well the strangers couldn't. Oh, I imagine, yeah. oh, I imagine they'd let them. I, I never heard of them doing it, but I had an idea that they would get you eat there if you wanted to. But. How did the cookhouse dispose of their refuge? You mentioned slop holes that uh, the family houses had. Well, they, had the, they had this, like I said, they had this. Had this uh, we're back at uh, how the the cookhouse disposed of oh, their they had this uh, this wagon on wheels, and then the winter time they had a lot of snow. They had sled they put on, but they'd haul this slop and everything if they didn't use the cookhouse. They hauled haul down the pig pen. Mm -hmm. and that's they fed the pigs off of this. Okay, how about you? You mentioned the can the cans and the bottles and stuff. Uh, uh, this one camp, this cliff camp, I, I was out there oh, several years ago hunting, and I walked over to a can pile. I couldn't believe these gallon cans. They hit them the cleaver. This way, and then it opened to open, to open them up. There's thousands and thousands of those cans out there. So was that Rusty. right next to where the cookhouse would have been? Well, no, they hauled those out too. Wait, oh, they did. Oh, okay. they all probably a quarter of a mile away to the cliff there. They dumped them over. Okay, so there in camp itself, uh, around the cookhouse and whatnot, they kept it. Oh, very sanitary. Very sanitary. Very clean. Okay. Uh, let's see. Any problem with? Boomins or coyotes or anything coming into camp? Oh, uh, no, I don't think they might have a cat now and then get dis disappear. Okay, when you moved camp from one location to another, did Shevlin Hickson have a policy or a procedure for dealing with the refuse that had been left behind? They, they owned the land. Okay, okay. They just leave it, but they could use it, just leave it. Yeah. Like cellars and stuff, wood the cellars. And they didn't doze anything over or flatten no, off or no. spread it or anything, burn it. The environmentalist? No, no, it's just, my reason for asking is because, uh, uh, let me just shut this up. Yeah. Let them know what they're going to do. Let's let them in. And, uh, uh, but, my God, I've been out these camps and all that stuff you can't even see anymore. And it's all, uh, the environmentals down there are uh, talking about this uh, big fire they had down Northern California and Southern Oregon. They wouldn't let them go in love it because they said they'd make roads in there and ruin the country. And, and I've seen railroad grades out there, roads, trees that big around right in the middle of them. It's all, you didn't know some of those camps, you wouldn't know what it was. No, no you're right. You know, the 50 years, it all uh, disintegrates. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> about the only time you can tell where a camp is, where these people went around digging up the stop holes to find the bottles. Yeah. <laughs> Junior's dad used to give these people maps, or the old, he used to keep all the maps in the old camps. And he'd give them those maps and they'd go out and find these stop holes. Junior, who is Junior's dad? Clint. Clint. Both, okay. of, both of them are Clint. Okay. Clint Jr. Okay. Because I'd like to get a hold of some maps. And I, that's I don't know if he has any more or not. Yeah. He didn't mention them when I talked to him, so uh, maybe he doesn't. Uh, okay. We, we talked a little bit about schools, and Shevlin Hickson provided schooling for the kids in the camps. Is that right? Well, they provided the school house for them. Okay. But uh, the, the county, uh, we were always the Deschutes County number number four, I think it was, uh, we were in, that the, that the county was first and teachers and the, and the uh, paper and stuff. So okay. We used to carry our own lunches. We didn't get free lunches and we didn't, we had to buy our own tablets and things and books and they furnished the desks and the uh, teacher. Okay, so the district provided the teachers and the desks and the school supplies? No, uh, well, what, I guess uh, chalk and things like that, the, the district did. But, uh, we all had it. We had, had our own tablets and school tablets, you know what they are. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but the books and things, the books, district supplied. Because we no, they didn't supply the books. We'd, we'd uh, in fact, I'd just buy some kid to get out of the fourth grade, for example. He'd go into fifth grade, and I'd buy his fourth grade books. Mm -hmm. And then you could buy new books through the, through the, the county. Okay. And uh, so what Shevlin Hicks and the company provide was the schoolhouse itself. Schoolhouse. Now, was that a separate building, or was that somehow used for other functions no, as well? it was like one of the big bunkhouses, as long as it didn't have any participants. Okay, but that that was the schoolhouse, uh -huh. and it wasn't really used for anything else. What about the desks? Well, the desks were county-owned, I'm sure. Okay, okay. All right. 
Uh, and it was a part of the local district. Uh, what grades were taught there? First through sixth. Okay. Seventh and eighth grade, we went to uh, La Pine Camp. That's what I remember mostly. They went to uh, La Pine. Before that, though, the uh, kids uh, the eighth, uh, high school, they sent them to band to school, but it's supposed to band. But usually the kids drove home weekends or had a car or, or uh, boarded. What would you estimate the average student body as being for those? Well, I'll see when I was in the camp school, that's probably uh, oh, 50 or 6, 75 kids, I guess, in school. Okay. What about churches? Uh, was there a designated yeah, place for religious worship? Well, we had a community hall, and uh, this, uh, it had a church in there, too. This is George Redding I was telling you about it. Friendly Indian. Mm -hmm. Now, is this the pastor of the Pines? Uh huh. Okay. Uh, the, uh, but they had a, before that, they had a, Bill Bear was the uh, uh, timekeeper and whatnot. The Native American Legion and World War I vets, they had some parties up there, you know, kind of rowdy, but at the community center. Yeah, and uh, they, had, they had movies for the kids there sometimes, parties for the kids. Community building, but they, some of these American Legion guys, uh, they're, they're pretty rowdy, get drinking and raising hell, you know. And these preachers didn't like it. Not George, but uh, George Hurley came in afterwards. So they turned it mostly into a church. Mm -hmm. yeah, Sunday school, they have church on Saturday, uh, Sunday night, Sunday school. What sort of religious denominations do you recall being out there? Because everything, everything. Uh, the Catholics uh, used to come into town on Sunday. Band. Anybody ever get married or baptized out there? Uh, yeah, I got baptized out there at the fifth camp. Uh, old George Redding. Uh, yeah, but I don't remember. I think they all came to band to have weddings. Uh, Yugoslavia, the Austrians were calling. They, they had, oh, they had some weddings on the last couple of days. They were real ones. Out, out in the camp? Yeah, lots of booze. Yeah. I don't, uh, most of them were Catholic. They usually got married in the church or band. Well, we've talked about family housings and bachelor's quarters and the cookhouse and school and church services. Uh, what other buildings uh, were they and what function did they serve out there? Well, I don't know. We had a barber shop. And uh, we had some guy. Some guy usually worked in the woods at barber at night mm -hmm. and the weekends to pick up a couple of extra dollars. Uh, I think haircuts were two bits. Okay, where was the barber shop? Was it separate? Yeah, it was up by the bathhouse. Okay. Up, up towards the the the, uh, uh, the bachelor's quarters. And these the old bachelors, they, some of them throw some pretty good parties on Saturday nights. A lot of drinking. Yeah. A lot of bootleg. During uh, Prohibition? Yeah, a lot of bootleg. Yeah. What would the uh, Chevron Nixon company feel about that? Well, there's nothing to do about it, really. Uh, the guys that do it on the weekends. I mean, they, I don't think anybody was making uh, booze up there. They, I leave it around, though, like everybody else. The company didn't have a policy about booze, though? Well, as long as the guy showed up for work, I've seen guys go out to work and had an awful hangover, but they always made it. Yeah. But they, uh, didn't, it wasn't uh, a cause for accidents or anything, working out in the woods? Well, no, uh, they had some accidents, but that wasn't exactly causing the booze, I guess. It was led to it, they were pretty dangerous. The cables up in the far trees and stuff, and they'd bust once in a while and wrap a guy up in a cable. But, uh, they had a machine they called the Clyde, loaded logs on both ends, and they killed more guys by one guy a week, so they finally couldn't use them. They mm -hmm. started with a ledger wood, and then they cut it down to the jammers. That, that was some pretty good accidents. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about the buildings. There's a barber shop, and uh, what other kind of buildings that maybe had specialized functions or whatever? Well, they had a, a couple of big buildings for a blacksmith shop. They had a, I don't always call it the cat house. They had a place that worked on caterpillars. Mm -hmm. Kind of a joke. Mm -hmm. And they had the roundhouse there. They, they put two or three local boys in there when they were logging quite a bit. Now, was that at every camp or uh -huh. was that a particular camp? I, I still like to go up to the old uh, uh, fifth camp and down where the roundhouse was. I could smell the old oil in the ground. I could smell the, the old lo uh, the locomotive smells that I used to love. Now, these locomotives then uh, were not steam locomotives. Yeah. They were. Well, what, what, what was the oil? Uh, well, they, they were oil fired. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, what about
about medical facilities? You know, you mentioned that it was uh, could get kind of dangerous out there. Yeah, here. well, it used to throw them on a train and rush into town, or else when they got automobiles, they'd throw them in the car and take them to town as they lived to make it to town. They could use make it. Okay. When, when would that have been? Uh, when, when, when they got the automobiles? I mean, was... Oh, probably 1929, somewhere in there, about the Russian times. Okay. Everybody had an automobile, all the Model D Fords and everything. But, you know. So, uh, so work in the woods got pretty dangerous. It was a dangerous job. Yeah. I didn't think it was, but I mean, to look back now, and people say it was dangerous, and I can see now where it was dangerous. Yeah. But it was pretty careful. It wasn't too many later on. And they had a uh, guy that had several women camp that were nurses, you know, meant nurses. And, uh, and they flocked down there and helped people out as they could. Mm -hmm. I know a couple of them, uh, uh, my dad's old friend used to have picnics out here at Bennett Falls. Load a train up, decorated, take a band and one from the camp. And this one old fellow was drunk, and he, I don't know why he got off the train, he stopped someplace, and he was standing between the cars, and the train took off and cut his legs off. Mm. And, uh, hit my dad pretty hard. Yeah. I just barely remember that. What was a Widowmaker? That's a tree that, uh, when it fell, the top come out of it, or it went backwards or jagged, it killed somebody. Mm. That's as far as I, I guess that's what you're talking about. Yeah, that's what I was wondering if that wasn't what that was. So, <clears throat> if a man got killed in the woods, uh, what was generally the the process of bringing him into town? Well, it, it would take the coroner out there and load him in a car and haul him to town. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so for the most part, there was generally a fairly sizable population with numerous buildings out in the middle of the forest. And the forest is sometimes very prone to burning. Uh, did Shevlin Hickson have any policies or procedures to guard or to protect uh, his property from fire? Well, uh, they always had to uh, get a bunch of guys to go out on the fire. Uh, they had a couple of fires close to camp. Was his camp ever endangered of burning by a forest fire? Well, could have been, could have been. Uh, never did. Uh, pretty, pretty careful. Okay. Were there hydrants and whatever out there? Well, uh, not out in the woods, but around the camp was hydrants where they could get water. Run with a bucket, bucket brigade. I remember one time a kid set a fire out there and uh, was burning pretty high. I remember this old fellow had a yoke, had two buckets of water. He runs back and forth throwing water out. They got it out. Mm -hmm. So in most cases, uh, if there were any danger of fire, it was from maybe a, a house catching on fire from this heating and whatnot. That you well, know. yeah, like I said, I don't remember too many houses caught on fire. A schoolhouse burned down one time. Mm -hmm. The janitor went in early in the morning and was doing a hot fire, a real hot fire, and uh, got away somehow or other, burnt the school building. They were on a locomotive up there and they had water on the tank and they put it out pretty quick. Okay, we, we touched briefly on forms of entertainment during the course of our conversation here. Uh, what other kinds of community entertainment were available to the folks? Well, we used to have dances. Uh, uh, Saturday night, you go to La Pine, mm -hmm. Crescent, uh, the camp progressed on down the road. And uh, they have always had a dance on Saturday night. Like In the camps themselves? No, they used to be down in La Pine or Timbers. They had a big dance hall down there in Crescent. Mm -hmm. So in the earlier years, when town might not be so close, uh, how did how, what did folks do for entertainment? Well, they come into town, been here, and, uh, Cooper. Uh, okay. <laughs> Saturdays get wild. Very wild sometimes. Yeah. What yeah. about the bachelors? Oh, that's what I mean. The bachelors come to town. Okay. okay. What about winter activities? What did folks do in the winter? Oh, we ski. Uh, yeah, well, my dad was an instigator building the. Uh, Ski jump, ski ramp, ski jump. We had a lot of fun skiing, the kids and snowshoeing around. And like I said, I never regretted growing up out there. We always had the entertainment. Uh, we made our own fun, but that's the way to enjoy it, I guess. Uh, everybody knew everybody, knew everybody's business. <laughs> Which could be good or bad. Well, good and bad, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what about Shevlin Hickson? Did it provide anything in terms of uh, community entertainment? No, like, the, like I say, you used to have the community hall, but they kind of Went by the wayside when these guys were so much hell. Oh, Bill Bear, he was running around her, you know. You know the Bear kids? No. Uh, Bill's dead, of course. 
Uh, he's quite a guy. Uh, well, we have uh, we have a ski boat. We used to go out in the wintertime and ski, and we'd build a great big bonfire. And then sometimes we'd go down the canal up by La Pine there with my cousin and uh, ice ski on the canal. Uh, mm -hmm. We'd build a great big fire with old tires on there. We couldn't really stand the smell, but nice and warm. We'd skate up and down the creek. One kid had a motorcycle team. Put some tights of rope on the high wheels and tow us about 30 of us on the back end of that thing and up and down the canal. We had a lot of fun. Uh, summertime, we were out trapping rabbits. Or, uh, we used to climb up these 60 foot jack pine and have somebody cut her down right at the ground. That's probably as bad as my hip now. I don't know. So. Uh, what about vacations? Uh, when did people take vacations? Well, in the olden days, I don't remember taking vacations. It's when you wanted to go someplace, you just lay off. Oh, okay. And, uh, later on, of course, they got the unions in there. They got to give them vacations. Uh, we had uh, our own entertainment. I, like I say, I, I never regretted being raised out there. I did envy the kids at Bend because they have theaters. Mm -hmm. So we used to come to town. Usually weekend people would come to that Bend. I would go to Canada Falls later on when we down around Chamal. Mm -hmm. We'd take in the movie and while our mothers were down gathering up the groceries and stuff. No movies or anything out in the camp? Well, they, they used to have them out there once in a while in this community hall. But they, uh, after they had all this trouble, uh, preachers didn't like this. Uh, use that community hall for booze and you know, okay. and party in there. When do you th wh what time do you suppose that was that the preacher didn't care for that? Oh, probably uh, during the depressions. Okay. And uh, uh, some of the people were pretty religious. They didn't go for it either, so. They turned it over, the community hall turned over to, we call it Sunday school. And they'd have parties there once in a while uh, for the kids, like the games. And they used to show movies there with, uh, years to go. And then they, then they, when they, I used to go to the Clint camp and I'd go out to, to La Pine and they'd, down there, they'd have movies down there in the high school, in the auditorium, sound movies. You know, and the light plant was always breaking down right in the middle of it. Well, you mentioned uh, uh, the Depression. Do you remember any changes from uh, all the years before the Depression to when the Depression hit? Uh, well, yeah, I remember it all. I, uh, but I didn't, uh, we didn't always have butter on the table, but we never went about something to eat. People still pretty much maintain their jobs and... Well, there wasn't any jobs, but it wasn't, uh, there was a few jobs that, that one guy maybe work three or four days, and then the family men, and then the other family men work couple of few days. Something to do around the camp there. There wasn't much, very little logging. Once in a while they'd go out and cut a few trees. And so there were, so Shevel and Hickson, like so many others, was hit hard by the Depression. Yeah. Okay. They, uh, they were good to us, so I, I'll tell you, I've uh, seen people in these coal mines in different places in the Depression that started with that, you might say, yeah. had nothing to do with Yeah, my folks were coal mine people. Were they? Back in the Midwest, yeah. What about what? Wyoming? Pardon me? Wyoming? Back in the Midwest. I, I don't know what oh. company, but uh, but anyway, you mentioned that uh, you know for family men, were the bachelors more likely to have been let go during that time? Uh, well, they kept them there. A lot of them did leave, but uh, uh, they took care of the married people. They had kids mainly, and I, I respect Shelley for that. Mm -hmm. I say uh, that was the only fair thing to do. A single man, he could get by somehow. Yeah. Some of them stayed there. Some of them probably worked too almost in the while. But uh, they evened everything out. I, I have no, like I said before, I have no regrets of being raised out there at all. I thought they took good care of everybody. Uh, what about family out there? Were there kind of conglomerations of families? Yeah, uh, you mentioned something about entertainment. Uh, they used to have card parties, play pinochle and bridge and stuff. They'd, Every so often, they'd have a family get together, four, four or five couples, and go to somebody's house, and they'd have uh, cakes or some coffee and things. And then they'd, they'd, say, oh, well, they'd, they'd make these card holders, uh, the chips, and hold the chips and the mm -hmm. cards, you know, and they'd give those for prizes. And I know they'd, they kept getting better and better and better at that, making those things. First, mm -hmm. they come out kind of crude, but boy, later on, they were real fancy. In fact, there's some guys that did carve real good at Scandinavian, and had them fanned out, all kinds of fancy stuff. People got along pretty good. There were very, very few uh, fights or anything between the families. There were a few arguments. Well, my reason for asking is, you know, in, in talking with Clint, you know, uh, he had mentioned at one time that, of course, 
you know, his mother and father were there, but he also had an uncle and an aunt, and his grandfather had worked there. Uh, and it seemed like, you know, a fairly extended family. Uh, did you notice anything like that as far as your kind of groups of family? Well, yeah, there's a lot of people related. Yeah, okay. Families related. They'd go back to East and get one of their uncles to come on out, or brothers and buddies, his family. And that's kind of how it worked. Okay. So, in a sense, when you say that it was like, you know, it was like a big family, in a way, it kind of was. Just like one big family. Yeah, because there, maybe, maybe there were, you know, a number of hundred peoples out there, but uh, within those hundreds, maybe five or ten might be one right. one group of family. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, that. You mentioned the company picnics. Do you ever go on one of these oh, company that's picnics? Oh, the greatest thing ever was. Yeah. I used to ride the train down there. They'd, they'd overhaul two locomotives every year, and they'd uh, paint them up and rebuild the boilers and, and the flat cars that needed rebuilding and put new beams on them. They'd put seats on them, bunting, mm -hmm. like money, and they'd bring a load out from camp, uh, town, and they'd bring a load in camp. And uh, they'd bring a big supply car, a uh, railroad car, watermelon, cracker jacks, and lemonade and ice cream. I remember the, I don't know if you remember not the ice cream and the orange, I mean the strawberry and vanilla and chocolate the slice. Yeah, uh, New Holland. Yeah. yeah. And it had races for the kids and it had a big old dance pavilion out there and tug of wars, fat men, fat women tug of wars and they grease a pole and trying to find the pole and win a pig. It was actually Benham Falls. And they had a nice place for it. Is that where it was held each year? Yeah. Big time, had races for the kids. When did when did those begin? Well, I suppose about 1923 or four, and then of course the depression came along and they stopped it. There's not that. Uh, what about unions? Was Chevron Hicks in the union yeah, company? Yeah, uh, all about 1930. Five thirty-six. They started the uh, the CIO, or CIO, the CIO. You know. They got union out there. They, uh, okay. What were things like during the the Second World War? Uh, well, just about like everybody else, I guess. Uh, I know Pearl Harbor. A lot of guys came right to Ben the next day, and on uh, Sunday, and they came and I signed up. My brother was one of them. Mm -hmm. I went down later and I couldn't get in. I got my eyes. I had bad eyesight. I had 20 20 vision in my glasses. But uh, all the young fellows left. And uh, of course, a lot of them were drafted too. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and they'd hire most anybody then because they, uh, they needed the wood, you know, mm -hmm. the lumber. A lot of people came in from different places and stay a while and they'd go someplace else. But it was pretty hustle and bustle. Uh, any people leave to go to work in war industry? Yes, a lot of, a lot of older people went down to Portland shipyards and Seattle to shipyards and also a uh, wine factory. Mm -hmm. So would you consider that as maybe uh, kind of a hard time for Shevel and Hickson to keep people working yeah. because of the demand for timber? Yeah, and then they, that's when they started all these chainsaws. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the guys wouldn't. Uh, they first thing they did was it. Bought chainsaws and they bought a little caterpillar, a generator. They run two sets of saws. And they were great, but a lot of the old timers they wanted to pull the briar, you know. They really well, well, yeah. And uh, these guys were getting the same scale, but they were getting about four times more scale than they were, these electric saws and chainsaws. So then these guys, they all wanted to get them and see how much money they were making. But a lot of the younger, younger people, and, and some people had uh, uh, experience in shipyards and stuff where they went to uh, uh, Shevin before the Depression. Mm -hmm. A lot of those people went to the shipyards because they were making a lot more money. Mm -hmm. I don't say that I blame them or not, but uh, I think it was a pretty good place to live out there at camp. Of course, was, transportation was pretty easy then, too. Well, you know, one of my reasons, too, is for doing this is some of the the logging outfits, maybe it was in the earlier days. You know, they seemed kind of brutal. 
towards their uh, their workers. Uh, you know, they kind of seem to take the attitude that uh, men were disposable. Uh, they were like machinery in a way. Uh, you used them up, wore them out, and then you got new ones. I think Sheldon was that way back in Minnesota. Uh, I've heard some tales some of the old loggers tell me about how they treated them back there. But, uh, no, they're, they're real good to them out here. I always thought, I mean, I, like I say, I best time of my life. Mm -hmm. All I do. What kind of reputation does Sheldon have with uh, the community? Oh, great. It was one of the first songs I was in Ben, and then Bruce Scanlon, and uh, uh, ben depended on Sheldon and Bruce Gannon. I mean, that was their livelihood. Built them. Yeah. You know, wasn't much to Ben when they first came in here. So then, uh, did did you join the Army then? Yeah. Did I, work him along? Yeah. I uh, finally got in. I uh, went to Fort Lewis. And this other kid, now, he was crippled. He had a short leg. Right. This is new gene now, yeah. Was a county engineer down there, a smart kid. We bumped together down here and worked in the mills. I, I, I was transferred to Brooks County and I went and I got a job driving a cat out there just before I went to service. And, uh, uh, I got drafted. Mm -hmm. and I couldn't, we tried to go, we'd go to Portland every weekend. And I couldn't get in the Navy, and didn't want to get in the Army, but we tried to get in the Navy and the Marine Corps and the Air Force. They wouldn't hire, wouldn't put us in because there was something wrong with us. Uh, so I, I know I got in, but. Uh, I uh, went to Fort Lewis, and, and shortly after I was in, they drafted my buddy. How about that? Well, you mentioned that you switched to Brooks Gamlin before you went in. Uh, why was that? Well, uh, I, I could, uh, we lived out, lived way out there at uh, Timbers, I mean, out at Fort uh, Summit Camp. And I don't know, I just kind of young and full of energy, and some of the kids, we decided to come to Ben, so I, I, we booked that job in the mill. Oh, you're, so you're working in the mill. But I couldn't stand. I was pulling stickers at midnight all night long. I was pulling stickers out of jumbo and sawdust and crap. Oh, God, I hated that. And uh, I heard that Sheldon sold a Brooks as a cat. So I called up Brooks Cannon. I'd never driven cat. Oh, I'd loaded logs with a set of chokers. I'd load a load up the cat when the guy had got off and rest a little bit. And uh, I called him up and asked him if he had a. I heard he bought a Captain Sheldon. Oh, he said, were you the captain ever for Sheldon? I said, yeah. Well, he said, come on out Monday morning. So I got a job driving a cat, living here in town, man, that was a pretty good deal, you know. Yeah, you did. So for a young guy who was at, of that age, it, yeah. was, it was more preferable to live in town yeah. than it was to live out in the camp. I'd gone to college uh, the year before, and I, before the war started, I was going to come home and work a year because I needed the money to go to school. And uh, then I, that's when all this happened, and in the meantime, well, I, then I went in the Army, so I didn't get it goes back to school. So after the war, did, what did you do? Well, I I tried to get on driving bus down here at Turnways, and it was not at state as in. And this jerk that was around the outfit, the superintendent, he said, all right, we'll break you in. He said, cost us four or five hundred dollars to break you in. He said, then you'll go into service. I said, well, I packed it 4 eight before I left. 4 f 4 I said, it won't take me. I've been trying to get in. Uh, he said, you'll be going in. He said, you go to the service and you don't get killed. He says, come on back, I'll put you on. So when I got out of service, I, first thing I did, the next day I got home, I went down to the depot there. Mm -hmm. But you weren't interested in working in the woods after no, the Yeah. Why, why was that? Oh, it's not the pucker brush. I've been in the Army, I circulated a little bit, what everything was. Folks lived here in town. My dad had put you in about this place here, a turkey ranch. Mm -hmm. I went down the next day and they, oh, I said, we got a hundred guys ahead of you. And I said, well, I thought that's the kind of guy you were. And I said, you told me to come back when the war's over if I didn't get killed. And I said, I did get killed and the war's over. When do you want to go to work? I said, well, anytime. He said, well, can you go this afternoon? I said, yeah. Well, I said, I'm going to send you over to Boise and take a trip over there. And, and I had to break in all along. Mm -hmm. So you weren't with the company when they sold out? No, uh, no. Okay. Okay. Well, Bill Ludwig was raised out in the Shevlin camp? Or in the Brooks. Brooks. Okay. okay. Used to, Brooks used to have a camp right there, right where you come down the road there on Lava Butte. Had a camp right there. I remember that real, real well. Okay. Yeah. So was uh, Brooks mostly east side of the river and well, Shevlin west yeah, side? Yeah, they went out as far as Lava Butte and then they went east and around uh, 
right around the China, down North China Hat, down that, uh, towards Cabin Lake. Right. Okay. So it makes it long time. Because there's a there's a fairly big camp out here off of China Hat. Uh, oh, I don't know how many miles. Probably ten miles out of yeah. town. Bessie yeah. Butte Camp. No, uh, it's, 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 yeah, it's considerably further beyond yeah, I've that. I've been by there. It's, it. it's past the caves out there. Yeah. Uh, well, were you around, were they using the, the horses and high wheels when you were in the camp? They were. How long yeah. did they use those? On the cliff camp, <coughs> that's about the end of the horses. Uh, I used to hang around down in the barn down there, boy. They'd bring a carload of carrots in there, and you know, buy a bunch of carrots or something. The horses would down there and gnaw off the outside and eat the heart out of the carrots. They had grain in there for farm. I used to go out, uh, they logged right from the camp. And I used to ride the old uh, old buckskin. He was my favorite horse, big old work horse, tame as could be. And I used to go out and bring him into camp. I'd run out and meet the guy, and the heat I'd be right on the horse. Mm -hmm. Legs sticking out like that, a big yeah. broad horse. Not bad. And they shot him, they got tripled up, they shot him. I was kind of a felt pretty bad about it. Cause yeah. Black, 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 you know, <laughs> so Cliff Camp was pretty much the end of the horses then. Did they continue to use the high wheels? Uh, well, yeah, they used the high wheels. They had these 60, best 60 cats, gas cats. What, yeah. When was that, about year wise? When they quit the horses? Mm -hmm. Well, I'd say around 1920, uh, well, the Depression. Okay, into the 20s, early 30s. Yeah. They started they had these best cats, then they started getting these diesel caterpillars, great big old yellow diesel cats. Well, I thought that was great. I hung around down there all the time, in the road all the time, asking questions. One of the things that bothered me worse, one of the sales would come out there and uh, <coughs> give all these cat drivers a watch for them. These were little pocket watches, mm -hmm. and they had a, a, an old caterpillar. And uh, he wouldn't give me one. He said, I'll send you one. I went down to the post I bet you every day for a year to see if I never did get that. Mm -hmm. I wanted one of those fog in the worst way. Uh, they had ledger woods, that's when they had the ledger woods too. Mm -hmm. okay. They all draw plenty of out with the ledger woods. You know, the big machines straddle the tracks, you know what they are. They don't have a ledger wood down at Cogger's Park, but they got jammers down there or something. The difference the difference, yeah. But these these were Great big huge thing that had a tower up on top. <coughs> That's what used to kill people in the Clydes. They run these highlights way up on a spar tree way up and they'd take the horses and they'd drag the logs into the, the, the drag line mm -hmm. and dump and they'd hook them on this high line and bring them into the, into the ledge wood. Mm -hmm. If you can fly all this country, I don't know if you can see it anymore on over on the other side too, on Oga. Uh, you can see where our landing was, big fans where they'd Drag the logs in, you know, mm -hmm. vegetation, you know, vegetation there. And you could see the fans out there, they move it down and fan out on both sides of the track. Mm -hmm. That's the how skid trails. The skid trails out. Okay, but the ledger woods, did those, uh, was that high leaf? Yeah. So they were flying those through the air? Basically. Yeah, they had one of the dry them. Okay, so it was ground leaf? Well, the front, no, the high leaves, but the big cable bicycle come down, the cable come down, pick the logs up in the front on the chokers, mm -hmm. and they drag them on the, but they lift the front of the logs up so they get them in, but the tail end of the logs would drag, you know, and they'd haul, oh, how they'd haul uh, 10 to 15 logs in on that high lead. So what was the dangerous part of that operation? Well, the cable's breaking, and, uh, and they had a whistle punk out in the woods, you know, the, the whistle when the logs were loaded, they'd go on in, the engineer would you know when uh, ready to pull the light in, because he couldn't see. Right. Uh, and, uh, oh, the logs kicking up in the air, and hitting the dead fall, stagger somebody alongside the trail, get hit with it. Hmm. It was kind of a dangerous deal. The edges were better than the Clydes, but uh, the jammers, then they got the horses used to haul the logs into the, the, the Giffords. And the cats the same way, the caterpillars, they went to the cat, by the way, and they'd haul them into the landing. And they'd load it on one end of the, the Giffords. The landing was close to the rails. Yeah, right, on the, the, you know, right each side. They had logs on both sides, and they had this the Gifford on, on the track. The, the flat cars were up underneath it. Mm -hmm. And the engineer, they well, the Gifford could pull the cars down too, but they usually had a train, a locomotive there to spot the cars. Mm -hmm. So they get loaded, get my shot of the whistle, and they pull her up, they whistle her again from the stop, and they jam the air to it to stop the car, and they load that, and then they pull the next car up. Ray, uh, Lois, my sister, her husband, uh, worked on the railroad there a long time. So, in terms of uh, kind of development of technology, how would you say that this, this worked? I mean, you had 
Uh, what, what came first? The Lidgerwoods? Yeah. Clyde? Clyde. Then they, uh, they had, then they started truck logging. Mm -hmm. But they had, the, the Giffords had a landing, had two of them out here by fishing break down over the hill into Fort Rock. They had two of them up there, and they, uh, two tracks, two trays, and they hauled these logs in the truck and dumped by one side of that. Uh, they started out on the pine camp, mm -hmm. the truck logging. And, uh, that saved them. You know, it was pretty expensive building railroads. And that was there. Yeah. So they bought all these logging trucks and they had these uh, shovels, uh, cranes out the woods, part of one train. Mm -hmm. They load the trucks up a lot. Uh, cats and cranes. Yeah, with a boom on them. Yeah, and they load the trucks and the trucks are going in and dump them up this, uh, in the Giffords. And, uh, but they put them on the railroad and ship them into Bend. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because they already had the main line out there. Right? Yeah. So, uh, Truck to train basically began at the the, the pine uh -huh. at some time. Yeah. yeah. Okay.